you know what? I've actually struggled with my weight my entire life. Like when I look back at my pictures, I was super skinny at one point and then I, I had a lot of weight on me and my weight just always fluctuated. I had stretch marks even before my two children. My body would just stretch and then I would shrink again. And it wasn't that I was doing any kind of like fad diets or anything crazy to lose the weight. It would just be my lifestyle changes. So maybe at one point I was more physical with them walking more or dancing or kickboxing or something. And then another point based on stress, maybe I wasn't as, you know, physical or active. For me, I did not know that I was an emotional eater until I started looking at some of my habits. So the thing about me is that I have a high tolerance for stress. So sometimes I don't even know that I'm stressed until I'm like, why did I eat four donuts? Oh, I'm stressed, right? So then I start looking back and saying, oh, okay, so it was me trying to purchase the house or it was me working on this deadline or just having juggling too many different things. And I realized that when I'm stressed, my coping mechanism was to grab for food, right? So I just went through different phases of my life where based on what was going on, I would just eat really unhealthily, you know? And then, you know, for some people, when you talk about like PMS or your time of the month, when you have your, your cycle, a lot of people have those unhealthy habits. And I was one of those people where I had that sweet tooth. Where's my cake? Where's my ice cream? You know, where's the dessert? So it was just something that I battled with like my entire life um, until I met you. <laughs> Awesome. Well, not that you had that, but awesome that you're no longer doing it. So <laughs> right. Before we go into what you learned, um, yeah. tell us your results now. How mm -hmm. is it different now compared to before? So one of the major differences is the way I feel. So while I'm happy with the way I look in the mirror, it's also the way I feel. I realized that I wouldn't stay up very late. I would just be tired. I would be so sluggish, but it was because of foods that I was eating. So when I was on that heavy carb diet or, you know, eating the bread or the cakes or the ice cream, I would also feel so sluggish. When I started eating healthier, I realized I had more energy. So, you know, you would think that once you have those heavy food, you'd have more energy. But for me, it was actually the opposite. It was the flip. Once I ate cleaner, that's when I had more energy and my skin would glow. I remember going out with my friend and she's like, your skin looks amazing. What are you using? And I'm like, the same thing I've been using my whole life. Not realizing that all those foods that I was eating and my water intake had actually benefited and had my skin radiated. So those um, physical differences in your weight, the way your clothes fits, but the feeling, that inner feeling of you just feeling so much lighter was definitely one of the greater benefits that I experienced. Awesome. And now what do you do if you want to emotionally eat and you get you find yourself getting stressed? That's a good question. So the first thing I had to do was start to recognize my triggers. Once I realized that I was um, skipping meals or feeling some kind of tension or like um, stress in my shoulders, then I realized, okay, I'm getting stressed. So I need to have a plan in place. That plan in place for me looked like packing carrots, packing snacks, packing something crunchier that felt fulfilling. And let's be clear, I still have ice cream, but now I do more of a non-dairy ice cream. Like I won't do, um, I'll do like an almond based ice cream or a coconut or something. Um, but it's more about respecting those boundaries and not overeating or abusing food or using it as a crutch or, you know, just having this unhealthy relationship. So for me, the most important thing is recognizing when I am stressed, so being more in tune and replacing it with healthier habits. Absolutely. So do you still get those cravings? Um, when, so when I just started working on the program with you and like for months later, as long as I stayed on, I actually lost that sweet tooth. Um, I did slip a little bit and then I went back, you know, like having more dairy. It was um, non-dairy stuff, um, gluten-free, but I do realize that once I reintroduce it, that's when that craving starts to come on. So for me, it's more about limiting, allowing myself, you know, okay, maybe once per month or, you know, whatever cadence I come up with, this is what I will allow, but just making sure that I have a plan to reset and start over. Otherwise, I realize that that sweet tooth can become a problem again if I'm not on top of it. 100%. And that's the thing that I notice is like, if I'm 100% off carbs and sugar and dairy and all that, I'm fine. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I don't want to live like this forever. Let me reintroduce it. And then when I reintroduce it, I'm like, I want it every <laughs> day. Right. So that's what I've noticed is like, you know, 
being really strict about the portion size or the like the quantity like when you let yourself eat it yeah um, and being able to stick to that because I used to be a binge eater so mm -hmm. if I had you know cake and I loved it I would eat the whole freaking cake you know <laughs> yeah. um and it's like I could eat cake once in a while for me mm -hmm. like, yeast free dairy free gluten free because I can't have that stuff but mm -hmm. um I could eat cake once in a while if I let myself just eat the one piece, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. And it's the problem, like you said, when you're abusing it, when you eat the whole cake and that's what mm -hmm. I used to do all the time. And now I'm learning, um, you know, I can eat whatever I want, literally. I just mm -hmm. have to have a little bit and then that doesn't make me feel so terrible. And then I have more of a balance and it's not so much of an all or nothing thing. Um, and I don't feel bad about it. Right, right, absolutely. That yeah, same thing with me. <laughs> When you add stuff, like, are you just giving yourself a like a limited portion? That's what I'm realizing is the best option for me, because in the past, what I've done is like, okay, you know, I'm going to give myself permission to indulge. And then I'm like, oh, but I didn't tell myself when <laughs> that stops. And then you go days later and you're like, okay, I need to cut it. I need to cut it. So what I found that I have to do is say on the weekend or Monday or for two days or one meal, I have to make a plan. Otherwise, it's just going to get out of hand. Like, I really have to be on top of it and be very, very intentional about what I choose, whether it's, okay, I'm going I'm going to an event or I'm celebrating something and this one meal or this one day, but I have to be intentional about that time frame. Exactly, because I would find, like, if I would be on, you know, the plan, the eating plan that I teach really strictly, and then I would go off, I'd go off for, like, two weeks and maybe get yeah. it way back. <laughs> and then um, yeah. like, I can have, like, for me today, I had an avocado, so I'm like, I can have, you know, one small avocado a day um, or half a big one and that's fine. I can eat avocado every day, but if I'm going to yeah. eat 25 avocados, <laughs> I'm going to have to go another year without eating them. So, um, so tell us how much weight you lost. So I actually lost 30 pounds. My goal weight, when I started, I was 190 and my goal weight was to get to 170, but I actually got to 160. So I had cushion. So I lost 30 pounds. That's amazing. And are you still at that weight now? Sorry? You still have that weight now? I did gain a little bit of weight, so I have to um, reset, but yeah, it's 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 going to be an easy couple couple pounds to lose. Awesome. Yeah, and everyone fluctuates like within a couple pounds anyway, so that's totally yeah. awesome. so it's good that you gave yourself some cushion, so that way you're like, all right, maybe you get to 165, and then you're like, I'm going to pull back a little bit, you know? Right, yeah, and even for me, it's not like it snuck up on me. It was just bad behavior. I just wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. I just allowed myself to indulge too much. So it's not like, it just kind of like, oh, look at this extra weight. I was eating badly. So full and transparency there. We can never go a hundred percent in the middle. It's always like we're, uh, we're on the more strict side or we're mm -hmm. indulging. So it's always that back and forth balance. Yeah. So now what do you do when you have emotional triggers um, instead of indulging when you're not when you're not indulging? Um, finding other things to do. So a lot of times, if I'm having something going on emotionally, then I need to figure out what is the issue? Like, is it a control thing? Is it, you know, why is it stressing me? And honestly speaking, like I have my place so zen, I'm not sure if you can see miss, but I have like um, my diffusers going and that really, really helps me. I always have like a candle going. So sometimes it's just about getting up, taking a walk, stretching, changing your pace or changing the environment instead of just putting something in your mouth because at the end of the day if you're stressed about something me eating that cake I'm still gonna be stressed about it after I felt good for all two minutes and then gained weight but no real solution or resolution so it's more about um thinking about what the issue is and I journal a ton that really helps me awesome one of the things that you said that it reminded me of um putting that thing in your mouth that's not going to help um there was something this is going to have to get cut out. <laughs> um, damn, damn, damn. There's nothing I want to talk about. Me. Putting things in your mouth, control. Why are we eating? It still Sorry. doesn't solve the problem. Yeah, something like that, but oh well. Mind body connection. <laughs> okay. Okay, awesome. So, what would you suggest for people that are struggling with food? Um, whether they can't control themselves, maybe they're eating late at night, um, maybe they can't get over the cravings. Uh, maybe they just keep gaining weight and they don't, yeah. you know, they feel hopeless. What do you suggest? Yeah, so I would definitely suggest that they try to recognize what those triggers are. Like, what is it that's causing the stress? What is it that's causing the weight gain? 
and try to attack that issue, right? So if it's a health thing like maybe diabetes or you know cholesterol or something, then you want to figure out what that is and then eat for your body type, eat for your blood type or whatever you recommend, right? Um, but I would definitely suggest first finding out what the issue was. Like for me, outside of my bad eating, I didn't realize that I was severely allergic to gluten and moderately allergic to dairy. So I was eating these things. And what happened was I started to normalize the bloat. I would wake up every morning feeling bloated. And I was like, all right, I guess I'm just going to walk around looking three months pregnant my entire life. And I just normalized it. But once I took a, um, took an intentional stand and say, what is going on? Once you walked me through, you know, what I needed to do. And I'm like, okay, so cut out this for a certain amount of time, cut out that. Then I was like, oh, it was the gluten that was doing that. And then I did the blood test, <clears throat> which actually confirmed, yes, this does not work for your body. Stop eating it. So the first thing I would say is just find out what's causing the stress, what's causing the bad eating. But obviously I would suggest sign up for the new you nutrition. Like it is life-changing. It works. It's a no-brainer. Like I've seen your pictures, so I've, I've seen your different um, sizes and weights, and I'm going to be honest, I've tried a lot of things, and I won't say Weight Watchers doesn't work, I won't say Noom doesn't work, I won't say Exercising doesn't work, I've tried them, but it's more like they tried me because I didn't um, really get to the goal that I needed to get to, so for me, what I realized when I saw your pictures and I saw the changes, and you said the magic words, no workout needed i said wait i don't have to exercise okay sign me up i'm in so yeah i would just definitely say sign up for the new you nutrition because it's amazing it works and it's not a fad diet it's a lifestyle change it's healthy like you're not saying okay take these 10 pills and then take this laxative and do all this stuff you're saying get whole with food you know like mend your relationship with food. So I think it's just a lifestyle change that we all need to get on. Like this should have been a part of my journey a long time ago. And most people didn't know about it. I didn't know about it either. So yeah. Um, some of my clients are like, why don't I know about this? <laughs> so right. uh, yeah. And I, the thing that I was going to say also is that if you sign up for something like a program with accountability, it will bring up the stuff. Like you didn't know you were an emotional eater, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't notice before I started this, that um, when I'm happy, I want ice cream. When I'm sad, yeah. I want ice cream. Like yeah. I didn't know that. I was just like, oh, I want ice cream. And it's like, no, it's directly yeah. tied to my emotions, whether mm -hmm. I'm like disappointed or whatever, yeah. you know? Um, and it also brings up stuff like with, uh, like blood sugar stuff, like yeah. me being like, oh, like when you said having a plan in place, realizing that if I don't eat consistently, I'm going to really be craving stuff. So mm -hmm. it's definitely addressing everything as a whole. Um, and people are always surprised when they lose the body fat, how much muscle they have underneath. I know. And they're like, oh, I look all toned. And I haven't yes. eaten it. And it's like, well, yeah, because you do have muscle. We all have muscle. It's just that there's body fat over it. Yeah, they're just hidden. Yeah, for me, I feel like there was also some level of self-sabotage. It's like, I wanted to be the triple threat. I wanted to be the beauty, the brains, and the body. But the body piece, I was just missing out of it. And I'm like, is it a fear of getting to being that triple threat? Is it, you know, like, what is causing this? So when I started working with you and the accountability piece of like, oh, I'm going to have to tell Fallon. So let me just do what I want to tell her because I, I'm not going to lie to you. And I don't want to have to try to explain why I did something. So that accountability piece was mission critical to my success. And I'm so thankful that we started working together when we did, because had I not I'd had those tools in place, I'd probably be twice my size during the pandemic, you know, when it just hit. So I'm glad we started working at that time. And then like, I don't, I don't want to just give this all away. So. And how long ago did we start working together? We started working together March or April of 2020. And my goal was to be my goal weight for my birthday in June. And literally 30 days later, I met my goal. 